If you're like me and you spend any time at all on the internet and the algorithm has any inclination that you have even the slightest interest in real estate, you've probably come across what I kind kindly refer to as the doom loopers. You know, they're the internet gurus that have been preaching about the coming housing collapse for the past two three, even four years. With so much content in this kind of crazy niche, why haven't any of them been right? By what magic have we been able to stave off the proclaimed inevitable crash? If we haven't met, my name is Nathan Nekoshea. I'm a realtor here in Orange County, California. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, let's get into why those gurus are wrong what's actually happened and what we're likely to see moving forward. While I believe the gurus aren't necessarily being disingenuous, I do believe that they kind of pick and choose data points that without the proper context can ju really just appear to prop up their claims. It's really a form of confirmation bias that just leverages fear, stress, and anxiety, all while giving the illusion of market insight. But if you check the descriptions of their videos, it's probably pretty likely that they're offering even more guidance for a few hundred dollars per half hour consultation. To understand the present, we really need to understand the past. The guru say a crash is certain because affordability is awful, prices are through the roof. They even claim that anyone involved in real estate is lying to you about inventory and demand. They say that we're in for really just a repeat or a worse version of a, the 2008 crash. But are we? The crash of 2008 was really a perfect storm of inventory and less than ideal lending standards that, you know, dropped home values over 27% nationally. How did that happen? Well, if we take a look at this historical housing inventory chart, it should help a little bit. But real quick, as you can see on the chart, inventory is pretty cyclical. Each year starts at the lowest point, inventory grows through the year, then reduces toward the end of the year, and into the next. On this chart, each year is really depicted as kind of a hill, I guess. Now, we now know that the factors leading to the crash really began before 2008. If we take a look at the inventory levels from 2005 to 2011, we can see that inventory was nearly double the historical averages. It wasn't really until 2012 that inventory really came back to something that even resembled a normal level. But by that time, prices had been pushed down so much because inventory just far exceeded demand and the problem loans that decimated their unqualified buyers. And talk of the next crash really started to pick up steam before 2020. Although housing inventory was at its lowest level since the recording began in 1983, we all know what happened in 2020, the pandy wandy. But since then, housing inventory has really just continued to drop to where we are today, with less than a million homes on the market. And while overt demand certainly isn't high, inventory isn't even high enough to meaningful, me meaningfully meet that demand. And that's really preventing home prices from dropping. The inventory crisis is only exacerbated by sellers that are experiencing this lock-in effect. It's the gap between today's rates and their current mortgage is still just, it's too wide for many, you know, the would-be sellers to get on the market. For example, in California, 85% of owners have a mortgage under 5%. 69% of those are under 4% and 30% of those are under 3%. And 67.483% of all statistics are made up. Just kidding. But when you combine that with having a lot of equity in their homes, and you can see why sellers aren't exactly flooding the market with inventory. Another factor why a crash isn't coming today is the today's lending standards. When Dodd-Frank was enacted in 2010, um, lending standards were kind of established to prevent a lot of the issues that led to the 2008 crash. The impact that it's had on today's market is, is that we're not seeing a lot of risky or, you know, kind of funky, strange loans that, that have a ton of unqualified buyers, which definitely means that there's more stability. So fewer loan problems plus high equity equals sellers that aren't pressured to go anywhere which means since COVID, we've just seen far fewer homes coming into the market. 
And that especially is true with uh, homes that are in the entry level price ranges. But if you're thinking, but but home prices, they did go down some in 2022 and the first part of 2023. Well, you're right. But that wasn't because of an inventory issue. That was because there was a drastic and very fast increase in mortgage rates. Buyers really just pushed back because affordability fell apart at such a rapid rate that the scarcity of inventory was just an afterthought. I mean, to go from three and a quarter percent mortgage rate to seven point whatever in such a short amount of time meant the landscape for buyers was changing right before their eyes. So once rates started to come back down, affordability got better, but then scarcity took center, center stage again. When interest rates climbed again through 2023, affordability really became the primary driver again. But the lack of inventory didn't go away. And when 2023 was coming to a close, the rates started coming down again. And as buyers re-entered the market, there was low inventory raising its hand saying, don't forget about me. So what we're dealing with now is low inventory and affordability really just going back and forth. It's, it's a catch 22 because neither can improve without the other. So there's this juxtaposition that we're facing. Home values are still rising because even though affordability isn't great, it's better than it was when we were at 8% mortgage rates. Buyers still need to buy and low inventory is giving some protection to home values. And look, home values and demand are both heavily influenced by mortgage rates. So as long as rates remain fairly stable, I, I don't expect home prices to increase dramatically, but stable rates could give us a chance to build up a bit of inventory, at least a little bit. Until rates drop, I think the value increases in 2024 are going to be slow, really probably fairly flat. The question most potential buyers are, have right now is when will rates drop? Well, since mortgage rates are influenced by the 10-year treasury and that's influenced by the Fed base rate, I don't think we're in for a decrease until mid-year-ish. Now that can and will change if the Fed sees data showing that there's a slowing uh, economy, that there's a decrease in consumer spending and employment. but. I personally don't feel that uh, Jerome Powell and the Fed are in the you know, hurry up to act business. I think they want to avoid an increase in inflation at nearly any cost and are going to err on the side of caution here. When the Fed does cut rates, I expect that that's when we'll see really the bulk of our home value increases this year. Although I do still believe we'll be looking at a more normal increase in values like, you know, three to six percent. And according to Stephen Thomas, the Fed should be cutting, well, really they should have already cut probably three quarters of a percent to really get us where we need to be based on what he's been seeing in the economy. And he does warn that uh, that, that cut will cause a spike in demand and more listings will hit the market, but the, the level of demand is going to far outpace any inventory that comes on, which will push prices up, leading to what, which is what will lead to this year's gains in value. So there hasn't been a crash because inventory is far too low. Dodd-Frank lending standards limited the number of unqualified buyers, so sellers aren't pressured to sell, and small improvements in affordability are really keeping buyers buying. Well, those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear yours. Do you think there's a crash coming? Do you think there's an opportunity right now for sellers? What are the biggest concerns for buyers? Like the video if you like the video. Follow or subscribe if you'd like to follow or subscribe if you'd like to talk with me personally with no fee or obligation. You can schedule a time at the link in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.